So this is my experience, some tips, and some suggestions for taking the PE test. Now, I took the PE test, the civil engineering portion, in Michigan a few years ago. Um, now, if you're super smart, you might just need one thing, and that's this. Everybody calls it the Lindbergh book. It's kind of like a big dictionary. It has everything in it, but nothing in great detail. It has uh, equations and different concepts, but nothing really specific. If you're super smart, this is maybe all you need. Now, for a lot of people, uh, this might not be enough. You might need that and some example problem tests. So there's booklets like this, which have uh, sample questions in it. You can go through, and there's a couple for each section. Even more is you could find other sample tests. You can go back, not just the ones provided by NCEES, so these are ones directly through NCEES. When you sign up for the test, they'll probably have it in there, and they're 30 40 bucks to buy them. Um, but there are more example tests you can find with example problems. Those are key. You're finding real-world problems. That's the key, is finding real questions and examples that are going to be on the test. So there's lots of other ones like this. Again, I wouldn't suggest buy those big 5 million example problems. You want specific ones that are going to be on the test, and I'll talk more about that later. You want... You want to know what questions are going to be on the test. So you're not just going to buy a general book. You want to buy a specific book that shows those questions. Now the next level after you've got the Lindbergh book and some example problems is actual video of classes and lectures and even more example problems and slides. And there's two free ones that I saw online years ago. One is the Texas A&M 62 hour. It has slides. It has example problems. It has a teacher going through them all. It was from 1995, but it was really pretty good and went over a lot of good problems. So I printed all those slides out. I watched the video with it a couple times. And you're just going through and you can separate it into hydraulics, economics, all the different sections of the test. Again, this one isn't super specific, but it gives you a good overall general idea. If you have one of these binders at school or work where you, the old school binders where you punch the, the square holes in it, and then you um, use these metal clasps because you're going to be rearranging and organizing these. You're not just going to do it once. I made that mistake with this one. You can see this is a bind that I did at Kinko's or something, and I wanted to change it, but you can't. So this binder is fixed forever, and, and you can't really adjust it. But this one is another free test uh, and set of videos and slides, and it was from ASCE. And this was two-hour videos, and kind of the same thing. It's not really specific. It's a good general overview of everything that goes over all the different sections to kind of get you in the right mindset. There's structural analysis, strength materials, structural design, hydraulics, hydrology. Again, a good overview, and I separated these by tabs, and I went through and I wrote right in this book when I was reviewing it to circle things and highlight things and say, you know, this is going to be on the test, stuff like that. So these are two good free videos, slides, and examples where teachers and professors are going through and showing you general problems on the test. This helped. Now, the last two things that really helped me a lot were one is making a big index, like a spreadsheet, of everything I studied. So I did it on Google Sheets, and you're just making a big spreadsheet separating everything because on the test... You need to know, okay, this is a problem about stress-strain curve. You need to be able to find that example or equation quickly. And for me, that was making a big index, either separated by section or separated alphabetically. So if it said stress-strain, I could go down, find stress-strain, and I could quickly find four good examples. That's the key. You want to be able to find an example quickly. So you could show up with a thousand books, but if you can't find it quickly, it doesn't matter. you got to have a couple good books. So... During the test, I rarely used this book. If I went to this book, I was probably in trouble, or I hopefully just needed a quick equation. This book is like kind of your last hope for finding something. You Ideally, you want to see the example and say, I've seen that example uh, question before. I've gone through it. Where is it? Find it in your index. Find the book it was in. Oh yeah, it was in that uh, ASCE example. Oh, here it is. Here's the equation. Here's the problem. Here's how I can solve it. And for me, making that index, when I was sitting down and making that index, that helped a ton because I was kind of reviewing the problem. I was going through the books and saying, okay, this is a, a, a morning geotechnical question, and 
it's I would go through it and I would put it in the index and I would say what it was about and what it was solving for. So that was like a review. And then when I studied for the school of PE type of stuff, that was another review. So just making that index helped the day of the test and it helped to study. And with example problems, you might have a problem in your book that's exactly like the test, but one's in pounds and foot and one's in kilonewton per meters. So you want to have different variations. And again, when I made the index, I put in units, what it's solving for. So that really helps to break it down. If, if I found two example problems and one was kilonewtons per meter, I would find that example. And for that index, you can have an overall index separated by section, category, alphabetically. It's nice to also put it in each section of, so I have some more example problems here and I have construction AM. So when you're taking the morning construction, I have those separated here. So I have the index sorted for everything and then for each section. So geotech, I have it broken down. So if I know I'm just taking the morning part of the test and it's in structures, I can just sort through here. I don't have to look through everything I don't have to look through everything. I can just sort it by which section I'm in. So really you want to compartmentalize things. You want to say, am I taking the morning, the afternoon? Am I taking structures? I want to break it all down so I can find that example and refresh my brain and find that equation as fast as possible. Now, the last tip uh, I'm going to give is it worked great for me. Maybe not everybody needs it, but I did sign up for a class. So they're not cheap and there's all different types of classes. Um, the one I signed up for was really good. It was really specific. It gave me great examples. I don't think I would have passed without it. It was called School of PE. Now, you don't have to sign up for that class. I don't even know if it's still around. Um, but a specific class like that, and it had a couple of things that really were good. Number one, there were videos where the professor was showing you examples and people were able to ask questions. So similar questions that you might have. You could take the live session or you can watch the videos afterwards. And they went through the problem. So it's not just like, here's some example problems. It says it was a professor, a person that took the test the past year. He said, I've taken this test four times and this test, this question was on the test every time. That's what you need to know. He's, he'll say this was on the PM part of the test. It's been on there four years in a row. Here's how to solve it. And that's what you really need. So for that, they give you sheets. You can watch videos. And that was great for me too because it's hard sometimes if you, if you don't have a lot of time or you're busy or you've got stuff going on to sit down and study for several hours at a time. But if you have a video playing, so it really set my schedule of how I was going to study. I didn't just kind of have to wing it. I could say, okay, I have 40 videos, I'm going to watch two or three a week, and that'll give me a week before the test, I can review everything. And they tell you along the way, okay, you should be a couple weeks out from the test now. And it really helped me personally kind of organize things. And having that video playing while I was studying, I could watch it, and then they went through example problems. And that really helped having, it was kind of like being in a class with a professor where that person was going through, here's how to solve it, and you can kind of follow along. So again, like the other sections, I, uh, on the front I have AM and PM, construction, um, notes, and solutions. So they showed the notes, how to do it, and then actual example problems. It was kind of both. They were giving you the theory and then examples. And again, I have it broken down. AM, PM, geotech, structural, water, economics. I have all of the examples, where they are in the front, and then for each section, I have it broken down like this, construction PM, just that. And again, alphabetically, I can say, you know, bolts, boring log, borrow pit, building cost, bulkhead. I could go through, read the problem, and say, okay, it's a problem about bulkhead. I could find that where it is in this book. When I watched the videos to prepare for the test, I had this open, and I was writing down in here, putting my notes in the book, circling it, saying, this is on the test, or this is what you need. So I'm marking this up and this is what I had on the test. And again, I had that binder with that, that rearrangeable binder where you can put it in and pull the lever and it opens up and you can take sheets out, put sheets in, rearrange things how you want it. The last thing that kind of came with that school of PE test but uh, is also different is a bunch of references. So 
there's some conversions and welding symbols and bolts and OSHA. They always say bring reference books. You don't want to bring a thousand books. You don't want to bring an OSHA book for one possible problem that might be on there. But you can print out a section. I'm printing four per page. You know, you don't need a big, thick 400 page book just for one possible OSHA problem. But you can print four sheets per page, and if you need it, you have it. So the references, and again, in a class, they might say, you need this reference. Here's a PDF that you might need. You only need these few sheets. So that's another key thing to have. You need to be concise and organized on the test. You don't want to have 100 books. You don't want to have 100 reference. Really, when you're doing this, you want to have one binder out. You want to have one sheet, one example problem that you're following off of. If you're trying to look through four different examples, you're going to take too long. You might want to have, if it's a question about a definition or a reference you're looking up, you want to have one reference book. You don't want to have three different books out and trying to find everything and your test is in, in a sea of books. You want to have one reference book, one example, maybe you look it up in an index you have and say, oh, it's in this example problem test. You can find it in there. So staying organized the day of the test is key and having a schedule to study for the test. Again, when I took the class, I said, okay, I have so many videos. I'm going to go through all these. They're two hours long. I'm going to watch you know, three or four a week. It was great when the professor said, this is on the test. You need to know this one. And a lot of times it was. You're not seeing a problem for the first time. You're saying, I've already solved that several times. I know exactly where it is. You could go to it in the binder, find it, open up that example problem, set it right next to the test and say, okay, up, oh, it's a little bit different. And you can figure it out. You shouldn't be seeing a problem for the first time on the test because you're gonna spend way too much time to figure out the answer. Paying for a class is not cheap. They range from a few hundred dollars to a thousand dollars. I think the School of PE test was around a thousand dollars at the time, which is not cheap. However, number one, I wouldn't have passed without it. I wouldn't have passed just having example problems or just the Lindbergh book. I wouldn't have passed without taking a class like that. Number two, once you pass, you're probably gonna get, you know, you're gonna get a PE license. You're probably gonna get a raise or a lot of companies give you a bonus when you pass. So immediately that's gonna pay for itself and you're gonna probably get a raise to get paid more. It's paid for itself several times over. Um, and I think uh, for the class I took, they said, if you don't pass after paying for it, you can continue to take this class for free over and over. There's different types of classes you can take online. Some might be 200 bucks. I, I don't know if they're good or not. The one I took, I read a lot of reviews before I just signed up for one. Um, a lot of people that said there were definitely really good professors showing you how to do the problems, videos that were two hours long for each section, and they showed you the exact type of problem that was on the test, which worked for me. So you gotta have the right books and references maybe videos, you gotta have a schedule and organizing saying, okay, the couple months leading up to the test, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and prepare for it. And then the day of the test, you wanna have just a condensed uh, booklet of what you need on the test so you're not overwhelmed with information. So I hope this helps, thanks.